Hey everyone, today we're going to do a tutorial on uh, a gra uh, grasshopper waffle script. Uh, I know a few people on the internet have already done it, and um, it looks a little complicated from when they put it. Maybe I'm just not advanced enough for them, and I'm just, I'm not seeing it correctly, but um, the scripts, I, I understand the scripts, it's, it just feels like it's just so much simpler. I don't know why we need to make this complicated. But anyways, so today I'm going to do a tutorial on uh, just scripting um, a gra uh, grasshopper waffle script. Uh, basically, a, a waffle a waffle script is basically um, a, a, a way of gridding. It's basically taking taking a, a solid object and uh, gridding it the entire thing as like it looks legitimately like a waffle. So um, if you don't know what I mean, um, just Google a uh, grasshopper waffle script and you'll see kind of the uh, the methodology I'm talking about. It's basically contours in the x and y direction i mean there's n you can do the z direction but i mean there's you don't have to you can i mean i, I know there's i think i think the one i looked at the one i'm looking at right now does have a z um, no it does not it only has an x and y direction so this is um a way we can do it so uh enough of me talking so um i basically just made the surface randomly there's no um there was no, what's it called? There's no. I didn't really have any thought on it. I just kind of made. The, I just made a surface have four dips with four points to make it somewhat complicated, but it wasn't really like uh, a very complex surface. So let's start with uh, this complex surface. Let's waffle. Let's uh, waffle uh, structure it up. If that's the way, best way to put it. But let's just make a waffle script of this surface. So I'm actually going to first hide all this stuff because it's really annoying me. All right, cool. And you can see my original four points I have. And if I actually move the four points, it actually can change the geometry. Uh, sorry if you heard my phone there. Uh, so what, I, what I'm going to do now is to create, I just have to, uh, if I look at it from this angle, sorry, just trying to get a good angle on this, uh, is create um, a thickness for the surface. So I'm just going to do an extrude surface or, or just extrude. I'll just do this as the base, and I will set this in the Z axis at a default of one inch. So let's just do that. All right, we're good. So we have this now. Hit Z, and um, my computer seems to be running a little slow, so I'm going to close Chrome real quick. Sorry about that, guys. A bit of pre-editing in a sense. Uh, so, or editing in the middle of the film. Uh, so I have this thickness right here now, which is awesome, which is what I needed. So once I have that thickness, I can now start to, you can actually see there's a little bit of ripple here. I can actually start to make that waffle uh, type texture on there. And let's start with that. So I'm going to start with uh, a contour. I want a contour. Sorry, wrong contour. So this is contouring, uh, create a set of contour, uh, curve contours. So you pick the curve and you contour it out, or versus this is contour with the shape right here. So if you want to see, it'll be this contour right here, the one that looks like a rectangle. Create a set of prep or mesh contours. So cool. So this is what I want. So I'm going to take contour, and now just plug in uh, I'm going to actually, before I plug anything in, it asks for the shape, point, and direction. So I know I want it in the X and the Y direction. So I'm going to put this in the Y, put this in the X, and now I'll plug the shape in, plug the shape in here, and it's asking for a distance, and I'm going to actually keep the contour, sorry, the contour distance at around one inch. It's not terrible. I don't see anything wrong with that. So now we have a one inch contour. Nice. So now we have this contour, as you can see, this one and this one. You can see they start to actually create that uh, waffle gridding. So as you can see, it is basically gridding in the X and the Y direction. Um, I may be wrong. Uh, I may be wrong on this, but this is basically what I've seen of waffle scripting. It's just like a, a contour uh, type operation. It's really interesting, actually. So um, 
what I'm going to do now is do a, um, not contour, I'm going to do an extrude on these curves, because right now they are sitting, and now I, I know that I want, let's say, if I go to scribble, I'm going to write myself a note, and I know that the, uh, I want, I know that, let's say, my piece of wood that I'm going to laser cut this with, or if I'm thinking more in terms of physical fabrication, uh, what thickness I want it to be, then I can say, like, oh, I want this, like, three-fourths of an inch wood, or a uh, fourth of an inch wood, you know, things like that. But for construction, um, you can say, like, for how, you could, for if you're doing it on a model full scale, then it doesn't matter. I'll just make it whatever it looks right at that point. But uh, for this scaled model, I'm going to make the thickness of it the thickness of the contour will be, I would say, mm, what does it sound good to you guys? Uh, I'm going to do an eighth of an inch. How about that? One eighth of an inch. That sounds good. So I'm going to remember that. I just wrote myself a little note just to make sure that I remember. So I'm going to extrude this. But... This extrusion will create that uh, thickness. So remember, when I extrude this, and let's say I do the um, whatever direction this is, this is the x direction, it will have this uh, effect. And now let's say I do put, let's say I do put the 0 0.125, which is an eighth in decimal. And I plug this in. You see that it creates that eighth of an inch. But remember, it's not exactly centered. It's not exactly centered with that exact line. As you can see, it's not centered exactly there. It's not exactly uh, centered. So um, another way you can do this. So you can. So it's not exactly contoured. Um, uh, it's not contoured. It's not exactly. Um, what do call it? It's not an exact. Like it's one eighth, but it's like kind of offset um, in the x positive x direction. So the way to fix this is to actually do some math, do a division. Because right now, if you look at this, it's going one eighth this way, but we want it to go one eighth on both sides. So create, or not one eighth. Um, we want it to be one eighth total thickness. So technically, if this the contour counted as our center line. We wouldn't want it to be extruded both ways. So let's do that real quick. So we do 0 0.125 divided by 2 because we want it uh, cut in half right now. So we can just do that. That's extruded that way. And now we can do the other way. Now we can do the other way. Let's do a x direction. Let's do a factor in x again. Actually, we don't even have to use the same one. We can use the same um, thing right here. Negative. What in the world? I just type in negative. Very cool. Um, awesome. And we just put this as our base, and we're good. Awesome. So we have that, so we have our 1 8th, or our 1 16th, and another 1 16th, and now create our 1 8th um, we have here. So, and then all we have to do now is do a boolean, or not boolean, ah, solid union to combine the two together, so the two reps, or B reps, however you want to call it, doesn't matter to me. And just plug those two in. And it's lagging a little bit because there's a lot of geometry happening here. And it did not work, so let's see. Boolean union set is empty. Hmm, that's interesting. Let me see. Contours. Extrude negative. Oh, ah, I know what I did. Okay, so right now these are reading as surface. As you see, they're not, they're open solids. So there's no uh, cap. So all you need to do is do a cap holes. For both of them, I'm just going to copy and paste that, and throw this in here, one, two. So we have the cap holes and the extrude. And now what we need to do after the cap holes is create 
Oh, okay. Uh, do the do the solid lid, uh, and then we just plug both these in. Remember, when you do this, hold Shift, plug that in, let it load a little bit. Should work this time. Awesome. So now all we need to do is do this exact same process to the uh, to the uh, y direction. So I'm going to do that real quick. So I'm just going to go a little faster on this one, and uh, so it would just be I'm going to uh, extrude, uh, copy paste. Once we have that, we can do. I know I, my thickness is going to be the same, so in fact I can just kind of keep this in the middle. I know I want this in the y direction, and I know one of these need to be negative, negative, negative. Go here, go here, go here, and then here. I just want to save some time just by doing this a little bit up to speed. Here, cap holes, and then now we can finally do the uh, solid. And plug that in. Awesome. So we have these two. Um, so yeah, um, you can technically stop here, uh, but I'm going to go a little further with this and think about it in terms of a, a fabrication method. So we're going to create little like little slits in here. In here, so you can actually like you can press it in um, once you laser cut the file. So let's do that real quickly. So it will be, I'm going to say that the... I'm going to move, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one of these in the Z direction up by around a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to move it. I'm going to do a Z. And I'm going to do a 0 0.25. I'll plug this in. Plug this in. Plug this in. And now we got it moved up. And I'm going to turn this one off. And, you know, I'm going to turn this whole thing off. Since I'm messing with this geometry now, it's going to be a little confusing, seeing duplicates. And now I have this. Add that up. And this down. Now I'm going to do a flatten. And the reason why I'm flattening them right now is because when you do a solid difference, or when you do a Boolean operation in Grasshopper, it needs to be flattened. Usually, at least when I've done it, it needs to be flattened. So it reads the entire thing as um, in one list. Again, if you don't understand this, uh, the list manipulation would really help out. Because right now, now they are reading as yep. all as under one list instead of multiple lists. So we can do a now a solid difference. Sorry, it, it takes me a while because I'm thinking Boolean difference in Rhino, and then I have to keep. Because I've typed in solid difference in here before, and, so, and then uh, I've typed in boundary surface in here as well. So it gets kind of confusing. So we're going to do a subtract from, subtract with. So subtract from this, and subtract with this. So let's see if this works. And my frames per second went down on my film, but uh, it came back. And it's still loading. I'm not too sure exactly how to like keep down the time because it gets really, really, really high in terms of the amount of time it takes for the process. Um, I did watch uh, was it the video? He's a very new channel. Um, I'd recommend subscribing to him. By the way, he's a really 
he teaches a uh, grasshopper as well or in terms of just like commands and they, I think they're really good videos I think they're really well done videos I think they're better than mine honestly um they're really really good so um I will leave a link in the description for that guy's channel uh if you do like to learn grasshopper you should really check him out it's a really like the way he at least for me the way he explains it is really nice and he goes over these kind of obscure commands that I I have never used before and it gets me really really interested in like ooh, I want to learn how to use that now and kind of play around with it so so um I think I have a lot of contours so that's why it's taking so long but this should work not in theory it, it should work but the problem is it's taking forever because I did flatten it and you need to flatten it in order for it to work oh um, I'm gonna wait a little bit longer and click okay still going All right, cool. Should work by now. Yep. Sweet. So as you can see, it did create those. Sorry, those holes in there. So I'm actually going to now bake these. I'll bake this. So bake. I want to show you guys what it looks like. Wow, it took a while for it to bake, Jesus Christ. Um, and then bake this. Alright, and I'm going to zoom out all the way so it can uh, generate all the meshes into the view. Nice. Both groups. So this is a waffle pattern. It's also called a pattern. But overall, it's like a XY gridding. As you can see, that's like a waffle type pattern. I did make, I did give, um, architecturally, I did give some hierarchy to the, to the, what is it, which axis that I moved, the X axis, I'm assuming, right? As you see, I would laser cut out those areas, and then you can actually just place them on top once you have all of them together. It's actually pretty simple. As you can see, this is just a, a very basic waffle. Let me, let me see if I can make this bigger for you guys so you can see it. So as you can see, it's just a basic waffle kind of pa waffle patterning. Um, so I just chose, I just did a random surface. Actually, this surface looks pretty cool. But, um, yeah. So let me see what it looks like in render view. Yeah, it looks pretty sick in render view. <laughs> it looks pretty cool in render view. Um, Creates shadows, it's really nice. And actually, what kind of shadows does it create? If you always want to see what kind of shadow something projects when you render, is always just make a giant plane and just kind of give a preview. So it does dash out the those shadows. So yeah, guys, that's um, pretty much it. This is how to, this is my tutorial on how to make a waffle pattern. Um, in the in the title, I will have the proper name for it. I'm, I'm not too sure as. As you guys can already tell, I'm not like a connoisseur at this, or I'm not an expert at these names. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, uh, that's it for the video. I just want to do a quick video for you guys. Um, I, hope, I hope you guys had a good holiday. Uh, I had a good Christmas as well. I got a lot of cool stuff. I sh I'm actually getting a 3D printer, so um, I will make a video on that, and I'll be really excited to unbox that and uh, put it on this channel because I think with the future and kind of how CAD is going in parametric architecture versus uh, not versus but parametric architecture and um, modeling in CAD in general is the way to go and and now that we can bridge that kind of gap between I think a 3D printer is a way we can bridge that gap between the, the digital world which is kind of this and these uh, physical world just like using the laser cutter kind of bridges that a little bit easier and how on making these uh, so yeah guys thank you guys for watching Hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys on the next video. Goodbye.